Hi guys, welcome back to Worms Mass Academy. Um, just going to run through the uh, exam two specialist maths solutions, uh, multiple choice. Okay, um, first question we've got half ten inverse of x, and we know that the range of tan inverse is from negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, not inclusive. Um, but here it's been dilated by a factor half from the y-axis, so it's going to be negative pi on 4 to pi on 4. Hopefully no one had any issues with that one. Okay, consider the function with rule f of x is 1 on root sine inverse c of x plus d. We know that sine inverse is between negative 1 and 1. Um, but in this case, it's got to be greater than 0 because we can't divide by 0 and we can't square root negatives. So we can say 0 is less than cx plus d, which is less than 1. It could be equal to 1. So from here, we get negative d on c is less than x which is less than or equal to 1 minus d on c. Remembering you can have sine inverse of um, what would give you 1, because you can square root 1. So here we just get b. OK, which one of the following is equal to that? We've got no cubes, so I'm, we're going to have, a, uh, have to factorise. So 2x plus 1, x plus 1 on 2x plus 1. I would say cube, but I'm going to say squared and cross that out. And then I've got x plus 1, x minus 1, so I can cross that and that out. So I've got 2x plus 1 squared and x minus 1. And this one here. That's not irreducible, so we don't have the bx plus c on top. Okay, cos, a, uh, cos of x equals negative a. Cot of x is negative b. Um, cosec of negative x is equal to co uh, negative cosec of x. Um, cosec is 1 on sine, which is also cot on cos. So negative cot on cos. Now we know that cot is b, so negative b, on cos x, which is negative a, so it's just going to be b on a. Okay, a plus b i, z plus 1 on z, is an element of all reals, which I must be true. z plus 1 on z. So, um, I think I've got z defined. Yep. So, z plus 1 on z. Let's expand it. Okay, so there's my real part and there's my imaginary part. We want our imaginary part to be 0. So, b minus... b on a squared plus b squared has to equal 0. So this has to equal 0. Um, that has to equal 1 because b minus b is 0. So a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. So a squared is equal to negative b squared. So the magnitude of these must equal 1. Magnitude of z must equal 1. Okay, complex numbers z, iz, and z plus iz. z, iz, okay. So if you think about it, if you've got z there, iz, um, is a rotation you know, 2 plus, I'll just say it's yeah, 1 
if it was one, and then if I put an I in front of it, so it's going to be a square because I've got that, that, and there. So th those lengths are going to be the same. Um, because we know that those two are going to be at right angles to each other. Um, so we want to find the area of the triangle. So we know what that length is. We know what that length is. A half AB. Um, half mod Z. Mod Z. Sine of 90, which we know is 1. So it's going to be mod Z squared on 2. Which is that. Okay, a curve is designed, uh, <coughs> given by that. X equals sine 2t, y equals 2 cos t. So let's define them. Sine 2t. Um, sine 2x, like that f of x. And 2 cos x, was it? 2 cos x. Make that g of x. Let's just check them. That's not it. And uh, yep, from 0 to 2 pi. Oops. Okay, so we want arc length formula 0, 2 pi, square root. Uh, sorry, square root of d, not the square root, d, d, x of f of x squared plus d, d, x of, no, what's that? d, d, x of, what the hell is that? That's bracketed. That's bracketed. Get rid of one. Okay, D X of G of X. G of X. Okay, squared. So g of x, g of x all squared, okay that's right, dx, <coughs> it's going to be easier to just define this as the derivative of that so it's clear, so d dx of sine 2x, store that as f of x, and then ddx of 2 cos x and then define that as g of x ok, integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of f of x and that's going to be like that squared plus the bracket g of x squared dx please 12.19 okay um Let's let, let u equal tan x, du dx is sec squared x, um, if t equals x equals 0, u tan of 0 is 0, if x equals pi on 6, tan of pi on 6 is 1 on root 3, so we would have 0 to 1 on root 3 u squared, tan squared du dx, dx so they'll cancel 
So that looks like it's E. Okay. Sine x plus y minus sine x minus y. Let's do this in the cap. So sine x plus y minus sine x minus y. Was it a plus in between? Simplify. So plus or minus? Minus. Minus. Stupid. Okay, two cos x sine y. Okay, so the twos will cancel. My dx will go to the other side. My sine y will go to the other side. So I get one on cos x um, dx equals sine of y dy. Um, that's sec x. So sec x equals sine y. That's d for number nine. Okay, slope fields is just check it into the cows, uh, which I think I've done. Uh, yeah, check this question out. So 2x plus y on negative 2x plus y. Um, that's the first one, which I think is like unheard of. But you can see. If you change the scale to be exactly the same, so negative 8 to 8, negative 8 to 8, you can see that it pretty much looks exactly the same. Um, I wouldn't waste my time looking through because it, it shows exactly the same gradients. Okay, consider the vectors m plus j, m b, i plus m j. Uh -huh. Okay. So, mod A is m squared plus 1, square rooted. Mod B is m squared plus 1, square rooted. Um, A dot B is m plus m, so it's 2m. And then our angle between is cos theta. So, 2m on m squared plus 1, because we multiply these together, equals cos of theta, which is cos of 30, root 3 and 2. So 2x on x squared plus 1 equals root 3 and 2. Uh, 2x on x squared plus 1 equals root 3 on 2. That didn't work. Root. And 2. Solve for x. That's not what you want. Root 3 and root 3 on 3. So that's root 3 and root 3 on 3. Okay. Two vectors when I add them together, that's exactly the same as adding those vectors together. So the length of two vectors when I add them together, A and B, if I had A and B like that, um, they're not going to be equal to the length of A plus whatever length that that is. But if they're parallel, then when I add them together, they're going to be equal to length of A plus the length of B. So to say I said A was that length, B was that length, and I found the length of those two together, it's going to be one long length. And then if I had the length of A plus the length of B, they're going to be equal, so they need to be parallel. Okay, the position vector is moving along that curve. The first time on the speed of the particle is a minimum. So R of T, 3 cos T, 
is going to be negative 3 sine t i um, plus 4 cos t j. Speed is the magnitude of this. So it's a square root of 9 sine squared plus 16 cos squared t, which is 9 sine squared t plus cos squared t. So I just took a 9 of those, plus 7 cos squared t. That's just 9 plus 7 cos squared t. What's the minimum value cos squared t can be? It's 0, and that occurs when cos of t equals 0 first, t equals pi on 2. So that's our answer. When t equals pi on 2, cos squared t equals 0, which means that the speed of this thing is a minimum, because we just worked it out. Okay, um, so I've got 3, 0, negative 2k, and I've got negative 1, 2, 3, a in the direction of B. What? What did I put the K in there for? So 3, 0, negative 2, negative 1, 2, 3. So. Was it 1? Negative 2. Comma, you want the unit vector of negative one, two, three, and we want the dot product of these. Negative nine, root four down, and four down. Yeah, and it should be scalar because it's a scalar resolute. A constant force of magnitude p newtons accelerates a particle of mass 8 kilos. Force equals mass times acceleration. p equals 8a. a equals 8 on p. In a straight line from a speed of 4 metres a second to 20 metres a second over a distance of 15 metres. Okay, speed of 4 to 20. Okay, so if we integrate that from four to twenty, ah, uh, sorry, if we integrate our acceleration from four to twenty, dv. That's going to be equal it's equal to the same as um, let's make more sense of this. So we've got what's p? Acceleration. I mean get acceleration by itself. So v dv dx is equal to 8 on p. So from here we can say v dv is equal to 8 on p dx. We know we're going from 4 to 20 and we know here we're going from 0 to 15 um, and they should be equal so from 4 to 20 of x dx that's equal to from 0 to 15 of a was it 8 on a or a on 8? a on 8 I think um, and that we can say dy and I solve Okay, I think it was decimal. 
102.4. Okay, the diagram below shows a mass acted on number of forces measured by them. The value of F2 is so. This here is going to be F2, because that's that, sine 45. So F2 sine 45. This one here is going to be 3 sine of 30. This one here is going to be 4. So F2 times root 2 and 2 is equal to 3 sine of 30 is a half. So 3 on 2 plus 4. Um, so that's going to be 11 on 2 times 2 is 11, so F2 is 11 on root 2, because that was 11 on 2, times it by 2, and then divide it by root 2, 11 on root 2, which is 11 root 2 on 2, which is B. Okay, a tour of standing in a hot basket, hot air balloon is ascending, going up at 2 meters a second. Two of drops a camera over the side when the balloon is 50 meters second, uh, 50 meters above the ground. Neglecting air resistance, the time in seconds per the nearest tenth of a second taken for the camera to hit the ground is. Okay, so what do we know? We know that our acceleration is negative g. So if we want to find our velocity, our velocity is from zero to t of negative g dA plus two, because it's already going down two meters a second relative to the um, relative to the the uh, hot balloon. So from here we're going to get um, negative g t minus zero plus two. So that's our velocity. And then we want to find our Displacement, so we're going to have x of t is equal to um, 0 to t again, we'll use t, and then we'll change this to be negative um, g of b plus 2 dB, and we know that it's 50 metres above the ground when it starts, so we end up with... Um, negative g b squared on 2 plus 2 b plus 50 between 0 and t. Of course this is going to be negative g t squared on 2 plus 2 t. If I put 0 in it's going to be 0 plus 50. That's x of t. And we want to know when the height is 0. So we'll solve that now. So negative g on 2 x squared negative 9.8 divided by 2 times x squared um, plus 2t plus 50 plus 2x plus 50 equals 0 solve for x negative 2 it's going to be 3.41 which is E. Okay, 99% confidence for the mean height in terms of random sample 36. The standard deviation of the height is. Okay. So we know our standard deviation on root 36, so on 6. Um, because it's a confidence interval. We're going to get the 95% confidence interval. So distribution continuous inverse, sorry, inverse norm CDF. We're going to go to the left, say so 0.975. So that's our value. So that times x, our standard deviation, on 6. That has to equal how far we are 
So that minus that, you need to find out the margin of error. So 67.31 minus 48.2 on to 58 equals 67.31 minus 58.42 on 2 edit Let's see. Mm, let's Interactive advanced solve for x 13.61. Oh, check 13.61. I'm glad we used um, accuracy of 1.96. Okay, the gestation period cuts is normally distributed to the mean of 66 and a variance of that. Um, the probability of the sample of five cats chosen at random has average gestation period of that a sample of five cats chosen at random. So, um, sigma is equal to four on three. Our standard deviation sigma is going to be four on three root five. Um, mu is equal to 66. We want the probability that x is greater than 65. So 4 and 3 root 5. So our lower what was what? 66 and 65. So 65 to infinity. 4 divided by 3 root 5. And then 66.9532. So that's E, number 19. Okay, lastly, number 20. Scores on maths and statistics test expresses percentage in a particular year would normally distribute the mean of mathematics here. Scores were mean, E of M is 71. Standard deviation of M. Is 10. E of statistics is 75. Standard deviation of statistics is 7. Assuming the test scores were independent of each other, uh, the probability of correct to find us on places that that is bigger than that. Okay, so we'll say M is normally distributed 71, 100, and S is normally distributed. 7549. Um, probability. So E of M minus S has to be greater than zero. Because when the test scores, you know, the probability for that around the chosen mathematics score is higher than that. So e is, M is greater than S. Um, I should say E of M minus S, my expected value is 71 minus 75, which is negative 4. Um, bar of M is 100. Bar of S is 49. Bar of M minus S is equal to bar of M plus, because when I bring that minus at the front, it becomes positive, bar of S. So it's 149. Okay, so standard deviation of m minus s is root 149. We want the probability that m minus s is greater than 0. So on our cas, um, that's going to be greater than negative 4 with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of root 149. So normally distributed, continuous, lower, negative 4, upper is infinity, sigma is root 149, mu is 0. Well, 0.6284, I must have something up. I must have. 
Um, my expected value is negative 4. Oh, I've done that around the wrong way. So my expected value, I want to find the probability that's greater than 0. And my mean is negative 4. 0 0.3715, 0 0.3716, which is up. Yeah, because my expected value in this case is negative 4, and I want it to be greater than 0, which is 0 0.3716. So that is the special multiple choice. And exam 2. I will do the extended response soon. Bye.